Aloha and welcome to Community Matters. I am your host, Keisha King. It's so good to be with you this afternoon and our special guest today. Today we're speaking with Sean Hamamoto, the Executive Director for the Neighborhood Commission Office. Welcome to Community Matters, Sean. Thank you, Keisha. It's so great to have you here to discuss the latest elections. I'd love to know all the details who ran, who won, and what happens next. So please, jump right in. Okay, thank you, Keisha. Well, as you know, um, this neighborhood board system is a volunteer system of community boards. We have 33 boards across the island, and uh, among that, about 437 volunteer board members. And we recently had our election, um, the community votes for their uh, board members. And, uh, you know, overall, we're very happy with the results. Um, you know, just judging from the numbers that we got, you know, we really showed improvement in three major areas that I would like to discuss. Please uh, tell us what areas. You know, first is in the total number of candidates. Um, this year we had 553 candidates run. And I can tell you that is the second highest amount of candidates uh, in history that we've had. And it was uh, more than we had, about a dozen more than we had in our previous election in 2017. So okay. we were happy about more candidates stepping forward. And, you know, I really have to uh, say a word for these candidates and for people willing to step forward and really commend them. I mean, you know, this is not a small thing we're asking. It's, mm -hmm. it's a two-year commitment. It's volunteer. They don't get paid a penny. Um, and, you know, they commit to at least, you know, one board meeting a month for a term of two years and to be there uh, to um, not only listen to the, the community's concerns, but actually represent the concerns at the board meetings. So, you know, it really hats off to these people who take time out of their busy schedules to improve the communities. Indeed. Um, I want to say, um, mm -hmm. how many positions were they looking to fill if you had over 500 candidates yeah. run? So we had uh, 437 uh, Vacancy, uh, vacant seats. Now, um, depending on the area, we had some areas with um, heavily contested races, mm -hmm. and we had some areas um, that weren't contested. So it's really a mixed bag. Um, but we did have a few, end of it out, we do have um, maybe about a dozen or so vacancies. Uh -huh. So that's another way for people to participate for, um, and it's actually an easy way to get on the board. Um, you can go to your next board meeting, and if there's a vacancy, uh, usually, if you're the only volunteer, more often than not, with board approval, they'll bring you onto the board, and that's a good way to get on the board without having to go through the elections. I see. Mm -hmm. So how many communities are we talking about here? So we have 33 active boards around our island. Um, every nook and cranny, all the way out from the Waianae Coast, out to Hawaii Kai, Chinatown, Kahalu. Uh, you know, we have so many different unique communities, and I think that's the beauty of these boards is we have um, these grassroots boards um, participating in democracy really at the core community level. Wow, I see. And so now the members have the opportunity to join the board yes. and help make important decisions for a larger group rather than just their small community. Well, yes. What, what it is is these boards are advisory in nature. I think that's important to point out. So they don't have any um, official approving authority per se. Mm -hmm. um, however, I can tell you that, for example, I know a lot of government agencies heavily rely on the advice of neighborhood boards when making their decisions. I see. Yes. I see. All right, let's get into it. Who ran, who won? Okay, so we did, as I say, have 553 candidates. Um, the winners were announced um, uh, last week, I believe, and the uh -huh. results, all, our complete results, all on our website. Um, I don't want to go through every one because yeah. there are several hundred of them. <laughs> yes. But if people are interested, please visit our website at www.honolulu.gov slash NCO and just click on the results tab. Okay. Um, so that's www.honolulu.gov slash NCO, NCO yes. for Neighborhood Commission Office. Office. And you can see the, the full results there. Um, but just in talking general numbers, um, I did want to point out another success that we had is we got one of the highest percentages of return ballots, ah. uh, which was really good. So um, we had about in total 18,450 total ballots cast. So um, 
that percentage rate was about 10.26. Mm. So um, two years ago, it was 9.96. So there was an improvement there. Okay. And, and actually, this was the highest percentage participation rate we've had since these elections went online back in 2009. I see. So okay. So, um, but one thing to put out with a caveat: we did have actually a lower number of ballots cast compared mm -hmm. to last year. But that's just because, um, and it's a bit confusing. But the way the system is set up, certain areas, if they don't have a contested uh, race, mm -hmm. ballots aren't set out, and that's basically to save money, yeah. right? Makes sense. Um, so it just so happened in this year's race, we had certain key areas um, off the top of my head, Mililani, which is a huge voting area, mm -hmm. um, parts of Hawaii Kai, Kalihi Valley, that although they had candidates to run, there weren't enough to have a contested race. Therefore, no ballots were sent out, therefore no return. Therefore, the numbers went down. So on the surface of it, it seems that participation went down. But yeah, there's that caveat to it. That's a weird statistic. But if you yeah. actually look at our... Again, our, the number of candidates went up, the actual uh, percentage went up, and very important, the number of contested races actually went up. Um, two, two years ago, we only had 45 contested races. Mm -hmm. This year, we had 63. Wow. So that, that's quite that's a, a increase. Huge jump, yes. a, a huge jump. So overall, mm -hmm. you know, we did very good. Mm -hmm. And very um, good. beyond just the numbers, I just really think it comes down to the quali quality of candidates. Which you know remains to be seen, but I am hopeful that um, a lot of quality candidates were elected and that they will serve their community faithfully and well. Right. And again, mm -hmm. these are volunteers who Correct. obviously care about their communities enough mm -hmm. to get involved and mm -hmm. hopefully speak on behalf of the their particular neighborhood yes. that they represent. But that would be really, really good. So, what are some of the issues that they bring mm -hmm. forth in these races? Mm -hmm. So. Well, in the races themselves, you know, every candidate is different. You have candidates running for different reason. Um, you know, I think a lot of the issues going now within the city has um, kind of rekindled this grassroots fire for people to get involved. And I can just off the top of my head, um, monster houses. Uh, you know, that, that is a heavy topic right now. Yes. All and, over the state. And this affects many of our communities in our urban core. And you'll see a lot of these discussions taking place at our neighborhood boards. I see. Um, so it's very important for us to have this open forum mm -hmm. uh, where community concerns can be adjust, um, addressed in a transparent way. You know, these mm -hmm. meetings are recorded and videotaped. Right. Um, so uh, in, for, in terms of transparency, it's a great system to have. It is. You know, we could probably talk a full hour about the Monster Houses Easily. issue. <laughs> Easily. Because this is where it happens, right mm -hmm. there in the neighborhood. And so the people want to have their needs met and they want to have mm -hmm. their opinions heard. And then once they do, then what you're saying is the neighborhood representative who has just been elected would take that information to the board. Well, the representative, so as a board, the board can uh, make motions, you mm -hmm. know, so they can, although they can't approve, but they can show support or, you know, not support a project. So mm -hmm. that's basically how they make their voices known. Um, a good example um, are city parks. So, you know, okay. a lot of our great communities, we have um, some great community parks. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, in some situations, um, parks are being misused, um, mm -hmm. vandalized, and mm -hmm. so forth. So what certain communities choose to do to try to address this issue is to have park closure hours meaning to legally close the park at certain times. Therefore, mm -hmm. HPD, the police department, can legally enforce trespassers. Okay. Um, now, however, in order for this to happen, what the parks department requires is for the neighborhood board to discuss this and, and show their support for right. the, the closure. And then mm -hmm. they can begin the process of you know, creating the signs and changing the rules. But mm -hmm. again, just to show you how important um, the input of the community is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very important, because if you think about that issue, you've got so many variables. Parents may want to use that park at a time that is supposed to be closed, and there's so many discussions about exactly. that. But then there's also the issue of homeless people who there. may be visiting the park at, you know, as their resting spot. So I can see where mm -hmm. that issue may be something that would be heavily discussed. And, and, uh, and this is a forum just for people to express their opinion. You bring, mm -hmm. bring up a good point. Some people may want to use that park at four in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but yeah. and it, so it's hard, but I think it's, it's about we all live in this community. We all have to live together. Mm -hmm. Certain compromises have to be made, but I think the discussion should be made so we can see our neighbors face to face. Mm -hmm. We can see, you know, how these issues are affecting us. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So it's important that no matter who you are, you get involved. Exactly. And you listen and you share mm -hmm. because that is what community is all about. And you bring up an excellent point, and you know, which reminds me, you know, um, we just had a very important holiday recently, which was Memorial Day. That's and right. It's one of my favorite holidays Indeed. as well. And you know, just thinking about that, um, honoring the service, the sacrifices that were made for us to have these freedoms. Now, I think the best way for us to honor the memory of these people is to take advantage of the freedoms that were fought for. That's right. And um, the neighborhood board system is, is one such way to do that, is to take um, part, an active part in our democracy. That's to, right. To speak out. That's right. We, the mm -hmm. people, have the right to speak out, Absolutely. to use our voice, free speech. It's important. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a constructive way to express your opinion and yes, your thoughts. Yes, it is. You know, we do have rules of order. We do okay. have rules of decorum because we don't want it to be an all out, you know, battle ro royale. So we do. Yeah. You know, on the one hand, everyone has a right to their opinion, um, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we do insist that these opinions are expressed in a civil and professional mm -hmm. manner, you mm -hmm. know. Um, mm -hmm. And so we do, we have rules of decorum, we do uh, abide by Robert's rules of order to make sure there's an, an orderly form of discussion and a way of mm -hmm. passing motions so that mm -hmm. it's fair and transparent. Yeah, well that's good. That's healthy discussion about mm -hmm. important issues that matter in the community in which you live. Yes, Very absolutely. plain and simple. That's fabulous. Now, how long have you been a part of the Neighborhood Commission's office? I've been in this position coming on four years now. Okay. Um, but my experience with the Neighborhood Boards goes back 20 years. Um, oh, wow. Um, I've always been in uh, government and public service, and I attended my first Neighborhood Board meeting 20 years ago, back in 1999. I see. Um, and I've been, you know, a state senate rep, a city council rep, a mayor's rep to the board. So I've literally attended hundreds of meetings in my career. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're fabulous. And, mm -hmm. you know, one thing I always think when I enter these meetings is why aren't more people here? You know, yeah. This is so great. Yeah. But the good news is, is a lot of these boards now are recorded. Mm -hmm. So uh, people do have the opportunity to view past meetings online mm -hmm. at Olelo and so forth. Right. Now, I've seen the, a few past meetings mm -hmm. at o Olelo, yes. and I know that they're not always fun to watch unless it's an mm -hmm. issue that you have an opinion about, mm -hmm. that you feel strongly about. But how does the word get out that these meetings are taking place? Is there a mailer that goes out? How do people know? Yes, yeah, so we are required by law to um, publicly give notice of these meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so we do post the agendas for every neighborhood board meeting on our website mm -hmm. and that must be posted at least seven days prior to the meeting. Okay. So again, go to our website um, and all of the agendas are there. Okay, so mm -hmm. they can find the agendas on the www.honolulu.gov slash NCO. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a commercial break and when we come back, we're going to talk about what more you can do to become involved in the Neighborhood Commission's office as well as your local neighborhood meetings. You're watching Community Matters. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. And welcome back to Community Matters here on Think Tech Hawaii, where you can find us always at the downtown studios on the Fort Street Mall studios right here. We are talking today with Sean.
Hamamoto. Got it right. Perfect. <laughs> and we're talking about the Neighborhood Commission's Office recent election. And I think something interesting happened. You had a tie? Yes, we actually had four ties. Four ties. Um, and that just goes to show every vote counts. Yes. And, you know, aside from these four ties, um, there were some other races where it was decided by less than a handful of votes. Oh, wow. um, I saw one race which was decided by one vote. Oh, wow. So the, the lesson is, is every vote counts. So, you know, people really need to get involved. So, yes, we did have four um, ties. We did a recount on those four ties, and there was no change in the outcome. So according to our neighborhood plan, which is our bylaws, the winners will be determined by lot. So we're actually going to be conducting that. After this interview, I'm going back to my office, and we're going to be conducting that um, to determine the winners of those four tied races. Wow. I feel like I should be there for that. That's like you back can. in the day when they <laughs> had the Chad. Remember that? Oh, yeah, those are the days. So. <laughs> those are the days. So they really say every vote counts. And this is a mm -hmm. clear and distinct reason as yes. to why everyone needs Everybody to get out to vote. to vote. Yeah. And but, you know, I think because you had an increase in voting this year, there are more people doing it. Um, and it, I guess that's because you all have created more awareness about it or the importance of it. Yeah. Yes, you know, we've done a lot this year in terms of um, being on shows such as yours, mm -hmm. um, online, just to really get the word out, um, mm -hmm. bus ads. And, you know, it, it worked. We are actually getting out into the community. We did candidate drives, actually going out, you know, sending out a table out in Waianae, trying to recruit people to run. Right. So, oh, so wow. we made a really concerted effort to getting out and uh, by and large the response was positive mm -hmm. you know yeah. i was happy uh well at first i was a little dismayed that uh, you know a lot of people have never heard of neighborhood boards as long as we've been around for over 40 years mm -hmm. but um ger generally once people know about us there is an interest because mm -hmm. generally speaking generally speaking people are concerned about their mm -hmm. community you know we have family friends and we all want everybody to have happy and safe lives here you know right and good relationships with their neighbors. Exactly. Yes, indeed. All right, so moving forward. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, so after this tie is decided, mm -hmm. this four-way tie, then is there inauguration or anything of that nature? Y yeah, so we do have an installation ceremony. It's scheduled for Saturday, June 29th okay. at the Blaisdell Center. Okay. Um, it's a different venue this time. I think historically the installation ceremonies were held at City Hall at the Mission Memorial Building. Mm -hmm. We opted for the Blaisdell this time just because it's more capacity. Uh, we did get comments in the past that, so this is an installation ceremony for all of the candidates who won and who will serve. Mm -hmm. It's about a half day event. It entails some training. Um, you know, I, I do a little um, speech and an introduction to the system, um, as well as the actual, you know, um, swearing in. We did get comments that, you know, it would be nice if family and friends could come. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's an event, and I yes. agreed, it, it should. So we got this new, uh, we're going to be using the Pekaki Ballroom at the Blaisdell, and we okay. are telling people, hey, please invite your family and friends. And, you know, like graduation, you know, yes. bring the lays and, and, and everything. Okay. So, so we're working on the program for that. Um, the one thing I, I can share with you that's going to, that we're doing a little bit new, is this year we're having a special part of the program where we're going to be recognizing current legislators, so that's current um, state senators, state mm -hmm. representative, council members, who were formerly neighborhood board members. Oh, nice. I think that adds a nice touch. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to recognize them, you know, and just to let people know, hey, these people started way back when in the grassroots, in the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And look at now, um, years later, state senator, you know. State senator, and dare I say, a president. You never know, had that right? grassroots beginning. Exactly. Right? But that's where it starts with the grassroots and just really being in touch with your community. That's right. So we're, you know, we're doing at that installation and, and we're looking forward to it. it. It should be a really nice program. Very good. That's, so what date is that for the installation? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so it's Saturday, June 29th. Okay. Um, yes, 9 a.m. All right. So if anyone wants to attend, is oh, it yeah, open the to the public? public's welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, they could essentially invite the entire neighborhood. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, parking is kind of tight. But yeah. no, of course, we want people to come, and it would be a good time. Like, again, I'll be doing a presentation on the history and function of the neighborhood boards. Mm -hmm. We'll have the State Office of Information Practices there giving some Sunshine Law training. Oh, nice. So, yeah, it'll be a nice um, program. Very good. Very good. So mm -hmm. that's installation. And then moving forward now, what can we expect? Okay, so yeah, so, you know, the elections are over, but our work is not done. You know, we're still committed to 
um, increasing public participation in government. That's why we were created. If you go to the city charter, the whole purpose why this um, neighborhood board system was created was to increase public participation. So um, I take that very seriously. So moving forward, um, now that the elections have been set and we kind of know who won in different areas, we do know that certain areas have vacancies mm -hmm. where they didn't have enough people to run. What we're going to do is we're going to be doing uh, concentrated community outreach efforts in those areas to try to recruit people. Okay. Um, and that's either going to be the, um, going to businesses in the area, putting up posters, um, perhaps going door, door to door, recruiting, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it takes. Mm -hmm. But now with mm -hmm. the elections over, are you going to then appoint someone if someone volunteers? Well, actually, the boards with the vacancy, they have now the power to appoint their own members to fill their own vacancies. I see. So what we would do is, for example, if I ran into you in the community and um, like say you lived in, um, say, Makiki, and I said, hey, uh, Keisha, there's a vacancy in, in Makiki. If you're interested, here's what you do. Go to the next board meeting, which is next Tuesday. On the agenda, they'll list, we have a board vacancy. Is there anyone interested in running? And at that point, you can just raise your hand. And um, what usually happens is the board will ask you a few questions, your background, why you want to run. And more often than not, they're happy to have you because, you know, it's a volunteer position. Right. And so that's another way to get on the board, too. So wow. we're going to be working on that. Okay. So um, let me just say, yes. for anyone who's listening, if you would like to get involved, check with your neighborhood board and you could possibly just be appointed. If there's a by, vacancy. If there is a vacancy by default because no one else has gone, has run. And, you know, I encourage people, if they have any questions, please call our office. We'd be very happy to help. Um, our number is 768-3710. Okay. And, and we'll say that number again at the end of the show. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. So this is really good. So mm -hmm. you've had the elections. There's still work to do. Yes. There's still some vacancies. Mm -hmm. um, and you all are still putting together different bits and pieces now and preparing yes. for the installation. You, you know, because even though the um, election is over, we still need people to be, number one, aware of their boards and to be active. So we, we're still going to be going out into the community to talk about the boards. You know, I made it a um, goal for our office ever since I took the helm that we make at least a thousand visits out into the community on an annual basis. Mm. At least 1,000 touches we make to talk to someone about the boards. And it's just face to face, you know, yes. I think nothing beats, I mean, don't get me wrong, technology is fantastic. We can't mm -hmm. live without it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, nothing beats the face to face, the eye to eye That's right. communication. And so yeah. that's something we really take seriously. So we're going to continue to do that. Good. You know, speaking of face-to-face -face and door-to-door, -door, mm -hmm. in 2020, we're going to have the national election. Yes. How are you all incorporating that in your neighborhood? Okay, so, mission? well, for better or for worse, uh, we're, we, we're not involved. Our elections are offset from those main elections. Okay. So neighborhood board elections are every two years on odd number of years. Okay. So the general elections are always on e even numbers. So we don't, yeah, we don't really court, um, conflict with that. Okay, and so for the census, then, there's no involvement whatsoever. It's well, just... actually, we are, we are um, I guess, maybe tangentially um, involved with the census. Uh, I did meet with representatives from the U.S. Census Bureau, well, gosh, maybe about a month ago. Okay. So I know they're about ready to do their census soon, which is yes. very important. Uh, we offered to assist them in getting the information out. Okay. So that's how we're helping them. Uh, we met with their executives and... Um, one avenue they're going to have is through our office because, again, we do have okay. 33 boards across the island. Yes. Um, so, and we actually did actually do an um, article in our newsletter about our partnership with the census, and it's just getting people to participate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that date is coming up upon us really quick because even though it's the census of 2020 and we're in 2019, mm -hmm. It'll be here before you know it. Before you know it. We're, yeah, it's yeah, half the year has gone by already. Right, and mm -hmm. I'm still stuck on last Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so this is fabulous. So thank you so much for stopping in today and sharing this information with mm us. Um, I want you to give us the website and your telephone number again in case people have questions or want to get involved. And then if there are parting words or points that you want to express, this is your moment. Okay, thanks, Kisa. Yes, um, for more information, please visit our website, www.honolulu.gov slash NCO. Um, there you can find board agendas, board minutes, a list of current board members, um, resources, the neighborhood plan, all sorts of stuff. 
If you want to talk to us in person, we'd be happy to. 768 3710. 768-3710. Okay. And um, yeah, and just some parting words, you know, I just want to say um, thank you for all those in the community that do step up. I think it's important. Um, you know, this neighborhood board system really is the cornerstone of democracy um, in our society here in Honolulu. Um, we're very fortunate to have such a system, not everywhere um, in the United States or even in this world has this public forum where people can be heard and have things on their record and have their voices heard. So really, um, at the very least, be aware of your neighborhood boards and if you can, take part. That's right, awesome. Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much, Sean. I think, again, I second what you have stated, the importance of it. I do have another question though. Sure. Uh, we have a lot of renters here. Mm -hmm. So do you have to be an owner resident? No, see this, I mean, that's a fantastic question. No, this is a very inclusive system. The only requirements to be a member, a uh, board member is to be 18 years or older and a resident. You don't have to be, yeah, so you can be military. It's as long as you're a resident, you're a part of the community, ah, you have a voice. That's important to know. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I think about it, I'm like, you know, there are a lot of renters here and they have thoughts too about their sure. community. They have an opinion Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Yeah, and their voice should be heard. So it's good to know that oh, you yes, guys acknowledge Oh yes, this is a very it. inclusive system. Very good, mm -hmm. that's important. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And hopefully we'll have you again. We'll hear about wonderful things that you guys are doing in all of our communities and neighborhoods. Thank you. Yes, indeed. So you've been watching Community Matters right here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we're hoping that you'll come back again. Today we've been talking with Sean Hamamoto about the Neighborhood Commission's Office. And we want you to get involved. Your words matter. Your opinion matters. So get involved, right? Thank you, Kisha. <laughs> your vote matters, too. We'll see you next time. Have a great one. Aloha.